was that every holiday? Christmas and New Year's at the same shopping, time? Shopping, right? Yes, people shopping for them essential board games, y'all. <laughs> Show. Hey, everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hi. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. Before we start today, we want to do a shout out to some of our Kickstarter backers. Uh, we want to say thank you to Josh and Christy Bach. Thank you very much. Just like the composer. Tom yeah. Strickland, fantastic first name. And Matt Linfante. What? Say that again. Linfante? Linfante. I like it. Linfante. All the That's names on, the, on these eccentric. three you picked That's are cool. all cool names. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to the other cool ones. Cool support from cool <laughs> names. Thank you, y'all. Cool support. Cool games. <laughs> Anyhow, today, folks, we are talking about top 10 essential games for gamers. Um, games that, if you don't have, you're not a real gamer. Which, just to clarify at this point in the video, is a joke. We don't mean not that. To me, it's not. That's that's what I meant. <laughs> actually, no. Actually, I. This is one of the hardest top ten lists I've ever had to put together. We've done similar lists before, and it's always been hard. And I think I finally realized this time why that is. Because you only have ten slots. No, not at all. It was really hard to find ten. It's because every other list I make is about me. I am picking ten games that you like. That I like right. exactly. Ten, Which? ten, um, ten best worker placement games. In my opinion, mm -hmm. it, for me, right? right? And if, you, I'd agree, if that lines up with you, great. And if it doesn't, sorry, my list is less useful. This is not that. This is 10 games for you. And, and I, it's too wide. Every game, I, I double-guessed and triple-guessed. I'm like, well... I didn't. Maybe. Like, you know, <laughs> this, might be, this might be a game that is essential for you. No, what if yeah. you don't like this type of game? I, I, the reason I did it triple so guess. insecure on this. I don't care. Get my games. They're good for you. I am 100% insecure on the well, list. Here's the thing. What I did with mine is that I, I did not. I could have just picked my top 10 and said, you need to own all of these games. But that's not really exactly true. That's true. If you are exactly like me, then yes, my top 10 games of all time should be in your collection. Mm -hmm. Because it should be. But that's not what this list is. Um, this is the way I went at it. I picked a, a single um, mechanism. And I picked a game that I think falls somewhere in the middle. of Not too hard, not too easy. It's right there in the middle to where it's going to, it's going to engage both gamers and new, new people alike. So that they can meet in the middle. Okay. So that's what I did. All right, what I did is I picked 10 games that if you came to me and said, I only have room for 10 games on my shelf, these are the 10 games I would tell you to get. I tried to pick various things like, hey, you want to do this, you're going to do this sort of thing, here's a game that fits that category. Okay. I would have preferred, frankly, 20 spots because there's a few things, so, no, there's a few categories that are missing from this list for that reason. Does your list reason. lean towards heavier games, though? No, but I put at least one on here because I think a collection should have a heavier game. If that's what you like, which I don't, I'm not going to say the whole list, but yes. I think the what heaviest if, game on my list is not is not going to be considered heavy by you two. I'm, 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 uh, I'm of two minds. <laughs> you're like I feel like you're super nervous. I am nervous. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we're not going to criticize you. That's a that bold is. face lie. <laughs> False. <laughs> Falsities. There's nothing to worry about. This is a welcoming, safe space for you to talk about your games with no unkind words. Nah. <laughs> nope. Yes, if you watch our top tens, Mighty, you know I'm telling the truth. Better hit the door with that jazz, because that ain't happening. We'll see what happens, folks. I, yep. I'm going to claim that there will be very, I don't know, I'm assuming there will be very little crossover, though. I, we think, might have, I think there's very little, yeah. We might have one or two games at most, but maybe I'm wrong. But I, I really don't think you guys picked almost any of the games on my list. I would be surprised if you did. Well, I'll, I will tell you this. I don't think I have most of the games on my list are still available. I would say all of them are, I think. I didn't actually check on every single sure, one. Sure, I tried they're, to assume if that available, was the case. But I don't think any of them are new. I mean, they're not new, new, like coming out this year or last year. I have one, uh, two games that are new, new. One of them, super new. I actually... Like, it might not be out technically new. 
if you, well, that's the thing. On your shelf, you should have just a little slip of paper that says, coming soon from Kickstarter. <laughs> it's one of your ten games. <laughs> that's right. Otter Here says lies. Of lies. course lies, man. It's a top ten list. <laughs> Wait, what? You guys don't lie in your top tens? We better start. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Number ten. All right. Hit it, Sam. Ooh. Oh, yeah. All right. A wrestling game. My number ten. Mr. T. No. My number ten is my area control mechanism. Uh, game that's holding the play, place for that genre and this is Small World. Small World is an area control game that has a lot of other things that are going on. It's not just about area control. It's also about uh, using your uh, race's ability along with its extra special ability in the most effective way possible. Uh, gaining points, knowing when. One of the things that's going to, uh, one of the reasons I picked this with that whole idea of trying to stay somewhere in the middle is that you can just play this game uh, as that area control and just focus really upon that. But you really do have to pay attention to uh, when to go into decline and that's one of the more advanced I guess you could say things that you have to think about in the game you're not going to be very good at it at the beginning but as you play it more it's going to become one of the things that you employ in your tactic your strategy is I'm going to take this because I know I'm going to go into decline in two turns because that's the best thing to do with that combination. And those are the kind of advanced thoughts that come in. So it's going to engage gamers, but it's also a very simple game to play uh, for somebody coming into the hobby. So uh, an experienced gamer should have this game in their collection because they can bring it to the table and use it in a gateway type situation with new gamers. They will be engaged, the person, the people, the new people will be engaged and it'll be a great time. So that's why I think it should be in I actually collection. considered this one because also this scales really well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the different you know, boards that they two have. Two to five. The different, yeah. Oh, six if you just two to five. Yeah, yeah um, not six. Don't and know. also, pretty soon next year you can get Small World of Warcraft. That's correct. Yeah, so that's my number ten. That I wouldn't get because then you're Small World. I call you a geek. This is not geeky. It's definitely geeky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Nervous. All right, my number ten pick is a tile. <laughs> I knew it. My number 10 pick is a tile laying game. Uh, normally I would have put Carcassonne in this spot, but I decided to go with Carcassonne the City because it feels more complete out of the box. That's another thing I kind of considered putting this list together. I don't want to recommend a game that is just a gateway to buying a bunch of stuff you need. True. Like Arkham Horror the card game. Doesn't belong on this list for me. I think Carcassonne's That's a complete game. That's a cool thing. You know what? I think I probably use that as a criteria without even thinking about it. Yeah, you want something that feels like again, yeah, if you've it's got complete. Yeah, if you've got good. ten spots in your shelf for games, I don't want to give you a, something that will, after a while, feel incomplete. Like, oh man, I really want this expansion. You know what I mean? So yeah, this one feels more complete. It's a little thinkier than the base game. It feels more tactically rich, in my opinion, and it scales well, too. This is one of those games that also, if you can go down to two players, it's just as tight, just as interesting. And the uh, the main, you know, sort of twist here from Carcassonne, the idea that the wall is going to build around the city and enclose it, mm. has a nice ratcheting of tension to it. Mm -hmm. I really like that part of it. So Carcassonne, the city. You did good. So far, so good? Yeah, all right. I'm pulling back my wrong. Oh, I thought you were like I'll reeling. save it for later. I thought you were reeling me in. Is what save, that was. I'll save the wrong for later. All right. <laughs> Polishing it off. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so the order of this list is kind of a hard thing to do, right? What? I put them. My, mine is a not in any particular order. Period. Got That's it. my order. I don't even know. I put my order that if you're down to one game, get number one. If you were going to get two, get this, <laughs> that kind yeah, of thing. Sure, whatever. No, All right. You just... Pick any 10. My number 10 is if I, I figured everyone should have one small game you can carry around in your pocket and pull out easy little small game. Deck of cards. You carry around a game in your pocket all the time? It no. Then but why should anybody else? There's almost always a game in my backpack. Yeah, but you never carry your backpack. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, I said you never carry your backpack. Well, I guess I do. Where? Where Everywhere is I go. Where is it? It's in the office. <laughs> you never go in there. <laughs> Anyway, my small game pick right now, and of course this could change at any given time, but the one that I would bring out 
especially with new people and gamers, would be Illusion. So this is a pick I bet you wouldn't have expected me to put on the list. Oh, gosh, no. No, I'm, I thought I'm about no. I'm thinking he's going to be all cheeky about it and say that was a joke and illusion. Well, actually, what I almost put on the list, Sam, was The Mind. Just because I thought it's always good to well, have that one game that will. Kudos for picking this one. <laughs> this is a great job. pick. Yeah. Well done. But, well, I always want to have one game that kind of blows people's minds. You know, I go, hey, you go play a game. like, what game is that? And you bring it out and show it to them. I think Illusion meets that criteria. So it's full of all these cards with these weird things on. And you are, you have, you put out an arrow of red, green, blue, or yellow. And then you draw a card. And you have to put it in order by what percentage of the card is that color. There's no way you can know this stuff. I mean, you can look at it. You're trying to guess. But it is just a really fun game. Uh, Timeline is another game in this category that sure, might work sure. well, but I think this one works better because you don't have to know anything to There's play. There's more it. appeal to this, like mass appeal to Illusion than, than Timeline, I would say. Right, and so this might be seem like an odd pick, and there's a reason it's number 10, but I just like having those little games. And so I've always had a game like that around. So my number 10, Illusion. All right. Number 9. Go ahead, man. <laughs> All right, my number nine uh, is the worker placement uh, holder for uh, my list, and that is a family game that I talked about a lot at length, and that is called Stone Age. Uh, I've not heard of this one before. Stone Tell me more. Stone Age, yeah, right. Um, Stone Age has uh, the the definite worker placement thing going for it, where you're you have a cache of workers that you're going to be able to use to send out to different things. They are then going to uh, represent how many dice you roll at these different, you know, uh, the, the rock quarry or the forest to go get wood or the gold mine to go get gold. And then you're going to use the resources that are generated from that to then uh, either purchase more huts or purchase some upgrade cards, development cards that will give you points later on in, at the end of the game. Uh, and and it's it's really a in its core box it's a very streamlined system you buy the expansion it gets a little wonky and i don't that's why i say you don't need the expansion for this you just buy the core box and you're good to go i like the expansion don't get me wrong but i don't think i've ever even played the expansion no oh, it's it's good that's not what the, what's the goal there is of the expansion the, hmm? what's the style <laughs> wow sorry wow the expansion for those of you that don't know is called Style is the goal. Initially. Now it's, now just, it's just called, called the, the expansion. expansion. I've already won Oops, Stone Age. We made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, if you buy the the picture up on the on the screen here is the original version of the game. There is a uh, anniversary edition of the game that's available that actually comes with expansion type stuff in it. Yeah, and those are a, a cool lot. One. That that's a better, although it's more pricey. Yeah. It's a better core version because the things that they add into it aren't as convoluted as the expansion. So, mm -hmm. um, but Stone Age is a great pick, and it's it spans well over a lot of different kinds of situations and circumstances. Should we be telling you if you've made a that's great pick or not? My, my number nine. No, I know I did. I'm I'm confident. I'm not like. <laughs> this guy. Um, Stone Age, my number nine. All right, my number nine is uh, I was debating on putting a worker placement on there. I also wanted something that scaled well to two people. I wanted something that felt distinct and interesting and tense. Mm -hmm. So my pick is Targi. Uh, Targi as a two-player worker placement game, a puzzly game, a thinky game, is a game I absolutely adore. It's a game that feels complete, though it is still simple. It's a game that feels thinky and challenging, though the rules are straightforward, and it just has that sweet spot for me where I never play this and don't feel a, a buildup of tension, good tension, like game tension, right? And at one point, at least one time, someone's gonna take the spot you're hoping to go to. The mechanisms are neat, you know, what you're trying to do. And then the middle of every turn, you're putting out some workers, that's pretty sort of, you know, progressional. But then the middle of every turn is a little free form where you have a few actions, you know, four or five things you can do, and you choose to do them in whatever order you want to. I, I like that feeling, too, of going, hmm, I'm going to collect resources from here and here, and I'm going to see what I get by top decking a card from there. Okay, now I'm going to use these things to do this. I like that. I like being able to sort of, you feel like you're being clever. I like games that manage to make you feel like you're I'm being clever. Because I'm not clever, I just want to feel You know, it. it's not, you're not being, <laughs> like you haven't, you're not doing anything in the game that someone hasn't done, right? 
the game is helping you feel like you are. And that's a neat concept. I like that. So, Targi, great two-player game on my number nine pick. Yeah, I thought about that. You know, I wanted to have like a two-player game. So that's actually kind of where my number nine is headed. Mm-hmm. But uh, I found that uh, people are generally knowledgeable about abstract strategy games. So I put one on my list. Even if one of the persons at the table does has a really wonky de- definition of abstract strategy games and does not include this one, but they're wrong. Uh, my number nine is Santorini, which is an abstract strategy game, 100%. End of the discussion. Have so, I said that this is not? I agree. You said there was some randomness and stuff, and like if you, because oh, the, the cards are special with the yeah the well, special gods cards. Yeah. The reason I would put Santorini in is because a it looks really good. It does. It doesn't even look like an abstract strategy game when you first look at it. Two, it has a lot of variety in it. Yes. Last time I made this list, I put Onitama on as was a struggle. I was like, ah, I'm tired of putting the same game on the list all the time. So I put Santorini, but also you could play with three. I like it best with two, but I just like the vast amount. This game feels like a slightly different game every time you play. Once you start playing with the god powers, sure, sure, and I, I get that. That is a that's a solid um, that's solid reasoning over my own abstract, which is coming up soon. That was Wait. an incredibly political <laughs> statement. Well done, sir. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, but I, I'm, a, I'm imagining it's good. I'm going to sleep tonight. The last thing I'll be thinking will be like, Z said something, and he said whatever. It was good. And then I'll be outside your window like, not that good. <laughs> <laughs> what the? What goes on in my house at I'll night? I'll see you tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Alexa, wake him up earlier than he said. Oh, that's awful. Don't tell my kids this. Yes. Number eight. All right. Mm, okay. My number eight is the, I think, the heaviest game that's on the list. On my list, at least. All the lists. Um, 7.3 pounds. It, uh, well, Which, actually, I, I, it is also kind of physically heavy as well. Uh, it's going to uh, take rage. the spot of the trading set collection uh, game, and that is Coliseum. Uh, Coliseum. What? It's the heaviest thing? Yeah, that's the heaviest one that I have on my list. Yeah. Roll, I wouldn't actually roll, call this game that light, roll frankly. Move. Huh? It's a roll and move game. That's one minor mechanism nope. in the game. It's a roll and move game. No, it's not. If you like Monopoly. I is, guarantee if we did our top like 10 roll and move games, you'd put Coliseum on your list. Well, yeah, because it has that mechanism <laughs> in it. But I think it would be numbers one through literally four. literally <laughs> one of the, I think, four phases that you have to go through yeah. in, in, the, in the game. It's so minor. Um... Uh, but Coliseum is a great game. The uh, the TMG reprint that is up here, it was originally a Days of Wonder game, and uh, that is the one that I really like the most. But the good thing about the... I think the, the rules are the exact same. Yes. Though, well, there's one slight difference, and you can simply not play that way. Got it. Um, the TMG is a great version of the game, and that's one of the kudos about it. They didn't really change it at all. Right. They just reprinted it with new pieces, new artwork, and that type of stuff. And the so tiger's scratching the inside of the guy's shield. Yes. that I don't know how that happened, but it did. Um, but this is a great classic game that everybody should own because it has a very cool theme to it. Um, the Colosseum in Rome, it's not bloody or nasty or anything like that. You're simply, it's more like, it should be like, you know, the theater in Rome or something right, like that. Right. You're just uh, you're, you're just amassing different elements that you're going to use in the show that you're putting on in the Colosseum. So it's a really neat game. I've really enjoyed it a lot over the years, and, and I think uh, you should own it. That's my number eight, Colosseum. All right. My number eight is my abstract game, and this is... I realized I, I had to look back on the previous times we've done this, and my pick used to be Czar. Or it's, at least it's been once. I went back to Yinch for this one. Yinch is, again, a classic, elegant. I know sometimes people hate that word, but whatever. I say this game looks elegant. Hey and man, it is. It's very stark. You look elegant today. Thank you. It's a very stark looking game, and it is that, you know, uh, black pieces versus white pieces, standard abstract game of the X things in a row variety, right? You gotta get five of your pieces in a row. You score a victory point for that, you do it three times, you win the whole thing. 
and it also has that Othello thing where when you go over a piece, it flips from white to black. Everything flips. So you're trying to manage where you attack, how you, uh, where you are weak, where the opponent is trying to set you up by distracting you over there, all of those things. Typical abstract things, yeah, but this game looks good. It's got a nice tactile feel to it. The whole thing is just feels regal. I mean, it feels elegant. Yeah, it was a tough, tough call. I considered Yinch also. I think Santorini is, has a lot of those feelings in it, though. I just picked Santorini because of the look. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, this looks elegant, as we've been saying. Okay, but the Santorini, Santorini has, looks like a city you're building. And as a game where people come by and be like, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this looks like chess or whatever. Like, it looks abstract. Um, but anyway, I like it a lot. Give it a try. My number eight. My number eight is that hook, line, and sinker type game. I don't know what else to call it. Fishing? That, no. So, I mean, like, you're in it? Like there's it animals gets, in it. It gets you in? Yeah, it's the kind of game where... Someone comes to my house and they're like, and you're like, I'm a board gamer, and their first thought is Dungeons and Dragons and monsters and space and all that nerd stuff. stuff. Nerd stuff. Nerd stuff. This is not a Although nerd game. I would game. argue that football is just big nerds and their fantasy leagues and all that. But okay, anyway, we're getting so off topic. What, what non nerd pick is this? This is Wingspan. Nerd! <laughs> I'm a bird nerd! Bird nerd. If it rhymes, whatever you're a nerd about. Nerd is the word. Um. Anywho, Wingspan is a game I think that works really well. It gives you a bit of that meat. Oh, that is not okay. Dude. <laughs> gives you meat. Is that what it is? And the game feels overall light as a feather, but it gives you some meat. Ugh. I'm going yeah, to church once. I, with you? I, was, I had to walk down this hallway, meat, you know, that, that uh -huh. kind of dark hallway back towards my, and there was these two chickens just sitting there on the railing just staring at everyone who walked by. Right. I was like, I'll eat you later, man. I was like, what do you, don't get me this thing, guy. Well, anyway. You've had chicken. I don't know why we're on chicken now. Wingspan is a game about birds, about seeing birds. Chickens or birds? Uh, bird watching. Yeah, I don't, there's not chickens in the game, though, actually. Why? Because you eat them while you're playing. It would be weird. Um, it's because they're flightless. Wingspan I'm is so a sorry. He complains when, he, when we interrupt him, doesn't he? <laughs> this is a bit Don't turn the camera to get you back. He hasn't gone past birds yet. I know. Mention no, the I eggs. Know how Mention the eggs real quick. All right. Yeah. Someone said this is essential games. All right. Anyway. Uh, yeah. That shuts you up. So uh, Wingspan is a game about collecting birds, but it's this engine building game. And it's one of those games I think that it could act as a gateway game maybe just theme wise to get people in but it offer, also offers a lot of depth there's a lot of replayability it's one of those games on my shelf that when people come over I'm like you know many times someone comes over and I'm like okay what am I going to play and it's like alright I'll skip all the fantasy and all the space because I know sure. not everyone's into that sort of thing Yes. and I have noticed with Wingspan in particular that hey I see on the internet all the time people are like oh, I don't like the bird theme they should have picked a different theme it sold 110,000 copies People like birds. Also, I like chicken. So, my number eight, wingspan. 110. That's a lot of eggs in the nest. Number seven. <laughs> this is so jarring. Get it? Anyway, um, for my number seven, this is the network building aspect of uh, a um, mechanism and oh, that is router mania <laughs> router mania power grid network building network got it forget it What's no uh, this is a ticket to ride specifically Marklin. now this one might okay. be kind of hard to get rid of get, get a hold of there's no might <laughs> This is extremely hard to get all yeah. of. But it's really hold. It's my favorite ticket to ride. That's why I picked it. Really, you can choose any ticket to ride game uh, to fill this spot. But Marklin is my favorite version of ticket to ride, which is why it's in there. Um, it's really just kind of being a placeholder for any ticket to ride game that you run across. It's probably a pretty good pick for you. Some of them are a little bit more cutthroat than others, so you might want to do a little bit of research on that end. <laughs> but um, I'll be doing a list on that soon, actually. Ticket to Ride is a 
a classic game that that should really be in anyone's collection at this point whether you're a gamer uh, a hardcore gamer or just coming in new to the hobby this is one of those things that should probably be in your collection period uh you so that's my your collection right oh, number sure. seven ticket to ride marklin but you can not pick Mark your own. i don't have Mark. how many Lynn. do you have you have like four or five maps maybe i got most of them yeah yeah there you go. That's hey, one they're the easy to throw in and out. I just played actually the other day. I played um, from the first pack. The um, the very first set was not Asia. the Indian side, but the Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, I That's just played it. Pack three. You sure the opposite of the Indian map? I thought it was one. No, one is Asia. Okay, okay then two. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Sorry. Um, all right, my number seven pick is where we're at. Yes. Uh, my number seven pick is my social pick. If you're looking for a game to play with different, you know, with, with a large group, you want to be social, this used to be Dixit for me. But Dixit, I realize there's actually not a lot of conversation necessarily. Because part of it is, you say a single sentence or a word, and everybody quietly picks things. This one I wanted to instill more discussion. So I went with Obscurio, which is a much newer pick. Hey, you took Sam's pick? <laughs> It's a very pretty no, I game. Did put it on this, put, it, put it on my list. Did you put it on this list? I no. thought this might be a crossover uh, because I know you've been digging I'll, on I'll it. Believe like, me, though, my my social party pick. It was either it this Dixit. one. It's Dixit. You've switched. It's either this one or that. I was like going between the two. Yeah. And the reason I picked this one is because Obscurio is newer, and this is a little bit more of a classic feel to it. Sure, sure. But um, I, I, hundred percent agree. It just agree. feels like. Um, yeah. It feels like it creates a conversation piece. Yes. That's what I like about it. The gameplay is very simple, but it's going to get everyone involved, everyone looking very closely at the board, discussing not just what they're seeing, but loyalties at the table. Mm -hmm. There is a traitor among all the players. This is a, a, a breezy but engaging game. I really like the way this plays out. And... Um, I think Sam likes it even more than I do. I, I do. just thought it was a really good pick for this list because I, I think you can bring, list, yeah. you're going to be able to bring kind of just about anybody to this game. Right. And there will be some laughs to be had, some aha yes. moments, all of that good mm -hmm. stuff. So You've been healed. No, it's cool. That's a, good, that's a great pick. Great Thank pick. you very much. My number seven pick, <clears throat> Obscurio. Well, my number seven pick is also my what we call gateway games. I mentioned the last one because of the theme. This one's because of the mechanisms. It's an easy one. I think everyone should have one of these because you never know who's going to come over and I got a game to play with you. This is the game I'll teach you. And it almost was Ticket to Ride, mm -hmm. but I decided to go with Century Spice Road. Hmm. I'm really torn between those two. If someone new says I've never played these games before and they, you know, if I talk about, hey, and they're like, you mean like Monopoly? These are the two that I'm always considering. This is the one I'm going to show them. As a gateway game? Yeah. But also, I want one that I want to play a lot, too. Sure. So this one works really well for me. Now, yes, there's a second one and a third one, but that doesn't have anything to do with this. That's I, true. You know, you can get those or not. But the, the Century Spice Road just works really well. Or there's another thing called Century Golem Edition, which is a, the exact same game with just a different theme. Honestly, I think I'd put this one on my shelf because I think the Golem thing, again, might chase some people off. It's a prettier it's game. Geeky. It's geeky, yeah. Um, then well, again, this no, is don't be wrong. I'm not ashamed of being a geek. No, but if the, if the objective is to allow anybody, no matter whether they're into science fiction or not, to play board games, then ultimately this is a better pick. I'm not necessarily sure it's a good pick. I think this is dry as a... If the intent is to... Again, show someone who's not really into gaming. I have never had this go poorly. Every time I teach this to people, they like it. Yeah. I mean, this is just, this is consistent. I probably taught, well, no, that's not true. Go ahead. No, lay it on me. Look, you're live. No, I was going <laughs> to say I taught more people this than Ticket to Ride, but Ticket to Ride's been out for, like, Who cares? Much I can't longer. fact check you, so say whatever you want. Go <laughs> I designed this game. <laughs> my <goodness>. uh -huh. <laughs> Since we're not fact checking at all. Oh my! Century. No, a fantastic Mister. game. Oh, and another thing I said, it scales really well. And I think um, this one goes to six, maybe, or is it five? I don't remember now. But I don't know. But no matter what the player count is, so I play a two a lot. It is really good at two. The so. introductory game that I would put in my collection, 
If I could only have one, probably would be Century Spice Road. Cool. Number six. All right, my number six. Probably, I, w I would. I guess, I guess it could be debatable. But one of the n most well-known newer games is Catan. Your number six is Catan. Negative. It's Catan Geographies Germany. Is this one? Is I don't know. Is this if one if available anywhere? Just say yes. Yes. <laughs> And that is to say, I don't know. You might, you, I, I don't know if it's still available. But if you find a copy of it, get it. Um, this is holding the, if you must have Catan in your collection. If you must have Catan in your collection. One. They don't have to. I didn't put Catan on my list. I know, I understand that. But Catan is one of those well-known games. That's the reasoning behind me putting this on the list. If you're going to get a Catan, this is the best one for your buck, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, now, I have some nostalgia factor because I used to live in Germany for a few years when my dad was in the Air Force. And there's a lot of nostalgia built up. I, I went to a lot of the different places that are, are monuments that you can build on the map. And uh, there's a lot of really cool fact-checking that they put into the almanac that actually went into right. how they built the board and all of that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of really cool things about this one. It's my favorite kind of Catan, favorite version of Catan that's out there. Now, if you don't like this and if you can't find this, they just reprinted the new Starfares of Catan. Now, that one... It has the star, you know, the sci-fi theme that's wrapped geeks. around it. But that's my second it's, favorite. It reeks of geeks. It's also much pricier. Yes, it's much more expensive as well. But you are getting a lot of bang for your Did buck. You say it reeks of geeks? Yeah. No, that was like 30 seconds ago. Yeah, right. But anyway, this one, if you can get it, get it. But if you can't find this one, you have to shell out a few extra shells to get the... Uh, Shell out a few extra shells. That's right. We are all forgetting how to speak. <laughs> this Don't is care. Where, is this because we're not near the? It's my number six. The keys? Is this the new Catan currency? Catan Geographies, Germany. Those clams. Have you been to Shell World? They make everything out of the shells down there. I have not been there. Have you been there? Yeah, man. Geek. <clears throat> what is this? This is your go-to insult of the day. Yeah, you're a keys geek. Keys geek. Keys geek. Oh, that's hard to say. All right, my number six pick is that super crazy, insanely new, what am I thinking? Uh, I'm thinking this game you'll be able to get, and this list will still be relevant. I'm, you might be able to get this. I don't know. Uh, it's a co-op game. There is another co-op game coming up on my list, but this feels different among co-op games. Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition is my pick here. Ooh. I Most believe you were just touching this game an hour ago. Yeah, but I would make the list a while ago. And get a room, by the way. I do what I want. <laughs> it's a free there's a studio. Light, there's a light outside that says, <laughs> don't come in. Stop! Come on now! There is a light in our space where we record. Yeah, what does it says, say? It says recording or whatever. No. Yeah, it doesn't say nothing else. It means don't walk in here right now. You're going to ruin some things. Just, just go. Saying. All right, anyway, this game is uh, a push that light your anymore. luck uh, cooperative game. And that part of it feels really different from most cooperative games. Everybody is working together, yes, but the the main feeling in the game, that, that central point of contention is all driven from pushing your luck. How much risk do you want to take in order to do something better? Do you go safer and do something that is slower or, you know, less profitable? Or, forget that, I'm going to risk the waves sinking Atlantis, go right to the tip of the island and get something great, but I, get, I might get washed away and get nothing at all. That's the main thing. The replayability on this thing is through the roof as well. Uh, there is a lot of gorgeous artwork all over the place. Bits are very nice. The whole thing looks like a luxury item, like an heirloom-esque board game. And that's partly why. I, I also tried, in fact, I bumped one game from my list because I didn't find it to be attractive enough, but I also tried to get 10 games that look good. Hmm. Games that... If, you're own, if you own 10 games and that's it, they should be pretty to look at. And the inch still made it? 
Uh, Yinge, I think, is very beautiful, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, I find this Rising 2nd Edition is coming out now-ish, so you can, you'll, be, you'll be able to get it. My number seven, Century Spice Road, was the gateway, the introductory game. So then I'm going to move up number six to the midweight game. Because you don't always want to play these new games. You want to play something more involved. Also, this also checks my box because I really want to put a drafting game on the list. I think last time I did this list, I put Sushi Go Party, which is a great game. Yes. An introductory style game. It's not on, sorry. But my midweight game here will be Bunny Kingdoms. Uh, Bunny Kingdoms is a game it's I think singular by the way King Bunny Kingdom not what I play um, Bunny Kingdom they do reproduce why is it called Bunny it should be Bunny Kingdoms anyway um, you are doing you are building your own Bunny Kingdom there are literally not. multiple kingdoms in this game it's your kingdom you started this stop correcting my grammar Anyhow, uh, Bunny Kingdom is a fantastic drafting game from Richard Garfield, the guy who designed Magic the Gathering. Uh, in this game, you have some cards. You draft those to place bunnies around the board and or score points. There's, It feels like a more complex game than it is when you're playing it. It's pretty simple. You take some cards, put them on the board, um, grow your Bunny Kingdoms and score. I really like this one. It's, it's one that when it first came out, I was kind of... Oh, this is pretty good, but it's consistently gone up for me in the past several right, years. Right. And I found that it's a really nice, what I call next step game after you play the gateways. This is one I would introduce people to. And also one that I'd be glad to play myself. So I really enjoy this one. Bunny Kingdom. Good, good job. Right. Number five. All right. Well, my number five is my placeholder for the two-player game category, and uh, that is either Hanami Koji or Jishia Academy. Um, both of these are the same game. They just have different artwork, different um, themes wrapped around them, but they I like are Hanami. very much the same game. I like the bottom one better. Oh, Hanami Koji is, is the original, and uh, then you have... Uh, GC Academy uh, is the new one. So I still wonder why they changed the theme on it. I have no idea. Maybe, Maybe it's like a male female that one is one sure. character. Sure, I have no idea why they changed it, but they did. But uh, one is you are uh, uh, you're trying to gain the favor of geishas in Hanamokoji. Uh, in Jishi Academy, you're trying to gain the favor of different scholars that are at the academy. So whatever you want to do, it is literally the same game with the same mechanisms, the same right. point of winning, everything like that. But this is a really good two-player game that has very simple me mechanisms. You can teach them how to play this game in very much less than 10 minutes. Um, but the choices that you have to make and what is going to be the right choice to make. There is a I split you choose mechanism in there where you're going to have to choose from your hand a, a number of cards and then your opponent gets to pick which cards he takes first and then you get to take whatever he leaves. Um, and you're trying to collect these different sets. It's really a tense uh, game. A lot of hard decisions that you have to make but it's very simple to play. So uh, it's really great. I think this is a staple. This should be a staple for any collection. That's uh, my number five, Hanamakoji or Jishia Academy. Uh, wow. I don't have this in my collection. Then. I broke Sam's rule. <clears throat> this is, I think the first one Sam said you're that I don't have. You're not a real gamer. Though. Card revoked. Yeah. What card? You you're said not you're gamer. not a real gamer if you don't have these That's games. right. We never you said just, that. You, you just said lost. it approximately of the build up to 36 this or the minutes ago. <laughs> I'm a number five pick as a racing game. Uh, I wanted to have one in there. Oh. I, I like racing games. I think it's a cool genre. I want the categories something. I didn't get in. Wow, you can't do everything like you said. You start with you a J. You wanted 20, so. Huh? Start with a J. Mine? No. J. Start oh, Jamaica? Is yeah. that what you were thinking? I thought you were going to put it on there. Yeah. I had to go with D. I thought about it, and I went with Downforce. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, similar kind of concepts. Uh, Downforce is less sort of in-your-face uh, confrontation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of jockeying for position and kind of, you know, putting people in spots they can't get out of very well. Yeah. But uh, I think the appeal is a little broader, maybe, than for Jamaica, though I, though I think Jamaica's appeal is... Pirates. Pretty much across the board. Most people will like pirates. They'll like what's going on in the game. Yeah, but a lot of people like racing, as evidenced by this upcoming weekend. Yeah. Oh, that's happening here. Okay. You want to talk yeah. about? You want to talk we about? We live in we live in Homestead, Florida. That's geeks. where the 
Yeah. You want to talk about speedway. geeks? Speedway. I know. I feel there so. Are racing geeks? I, I feel a whole lot I'm like I'm I pretty s- normal. Yes, that's Look exactly. Look at all these yeah. nerds, NASCAR <laughs> nerds. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, no, you're good. Um, yeah, Downforce, just a, a racing game. It's about cars, also, which is a little more traditional than like pirate ships or camels, right? Sure. Could have been a pick. Sure. Um, it, I, it felt like the right one to put on this list. So, you know, um, interesting enough, this I would have originally had we made this list ten years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would have said Formula D for this pick. Yeah, you know, that's right. the game. It's so easy to play and mm-hmm. such. This, I'd I'd always bring this out. A, it's faster. Mm-hmm. And B, it's not so crushingly soul wrenching. If in, in well, Formula like D, you, you can fall way behind. In this one, if you your car starts losing, you can bet on other people's cars. That's true. You have the cards. Also, you can see all your cards at the beginning, so you're not hoping to roll what you need or you know you overshoot. It, it just feels more controllable while still being quick. That's another thing I think racing games sometimes mismanage is they need to feel quick. You're racing. This one manages to do both. Not be completely luck-driven, but keep it, you know, um, speedy. You're up. Uh-oh. Does my number five start with a C? He gave that look. Okay, that's fine. I meant, to, okay, doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> I think one of the coolest things in um, gaming is deck building, and I also like theme a lot. And this one I'm embracing my full geek on, and that is Clank. Get your geek on. No, I mean, Clank just works really well in so many different ways. We just actually, this this uh, uh, this year we played Clank Legacy, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Um, but just the base game of Clank. I mean, I like Clank in space a lot. Um, I like the expansions for Clank. I like the, you know, all that. But take the, all that away, the base game of Clank just works really well. Uh, I, I have a lot of fun with it. I also like having Clank because unlike Z, I'm okay having a drug-style game in my collection that can let me get more. Oh. I like that idea. Like, oh, Clank sounds Clank like a drug. Fun. You've said Clank a lot. That's right. Well. Don't do it. No. No. Mm-mm. But it does okay. sound like you're walking down an alley like, anybody got some Clank? You know what I'm thinking. Man, y'all got that new Clank expansion? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I like. But but the fact is, I like having that game. Like I think my pick my pick for this last time was Dominion, which I still like a lot. But I, but I also like the expansions for Dominion. I like having a game that has that variety to pick from. I don't mind having a couple expansions. We didn't say top ten games that you can never buy an expansion for. No, we didn't. That was my own thing. I just I wanted it to feel complete, and this does. I don't think this feels incomplete. Sure. No, I feel that, but yeah. I don't mind having the option. I think there's four different maps you can get with it. That, uh, well, I mean, yeah. Downforce has expansions. <gasps> you yeah, there's maps, but I'm saying it feels complete. Now, I'm going to write some meaningless thing on my Go pick. ahead. Uh, mine was not meaningless. Yeah, it, it was mine says, I definitely wrote something. Mine starts with Clank. <laughs> mine starts with a K. <laughs> All right. Clank is my number K. five. Clank. Number four. All right. My number four is the tile laying placeholder in my list, and uh, that is Carcassonne South Seas. Boy, you sure made it dry like a city there. South Carcassonne South Seas. Seas. Yeah, South Seas. This one uh, is prettier, I think, than the city. Um, oh. It is also. No. Yeah. There's no walls I in South don't Seas. Care. No, I, I kind of agree with Sam. I think it's prettier. Um, it's more colorful. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's there's what I more meant. like little artwork and stuff. Color like doesn't that. always mean pretty. Sometimes elegant is pretty. And that's kind of how I feel about the city. But again, I'm going to be quiet about the word elegant because you were already picking on me about that. Well, clank. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> this is not uh, my elegant. favorite version of Carcassonne. Uh, actually, Amazonas is my favorite version because it has the racing down the river mechanism that I really enjoy, but it's kind of on top of everything else that you're doing in Carcassonne, so that's why I didn't. I picked South Seas because it's closer to base game what Carcassonne really is, but it looks better than Carcassonne in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And it feels complete because it is in there around the world in 
uh, around the World Series, I think is what it's called, or something like that. Around the World in '88. No, it's I like not. Po- it's not that. Point out, they never finished going around the world. No, they didn't. They went. But, to, they got. They got stuck in Africa, and that was the end of it. They went to Safari. I think was the last they one. And died yeah, on they did. Safari. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> a lion they got, got them. Ate by a lion, right? Uh, but uh, this one is is really pretty. It, it still employs basically the same mechanisms with a few minor changes and additions. Uh, so it really does still feel like Carcassonne, but it looks a lot better, and uh, it just pops on the table a lot more. So that's why I have Carcassonne South Seas. Really, any Carcassonne would be would be good, but there's a million and one expansions for that game, and you might experience some of that fear of missing out if, if you decide to go with base game. South Seas is a contained game. There's no expansions for it. It's everything you, you need to play the game is in that box. So that's why I went ahead and went with that Normally one. I'd accuse Sam of exaggeration. But I believe no, that's he may an be under, underselling how many expansions there are for Carcassonne. There's, there's a whole lot. Yes. All right, my number four pick is, uh, we've been joking about the geeky thing. This leans into that. But it also feels uh, minimalistic, and it feels classically uh, fantasy. Would you say it's elegant? Love letter. No, it's not that minimalistic, but you're managing resources and doing sort of, you know, again, traditionally fantastical things. This is Res Arcana. Wow, you're really loving this game. That's this sick. is a great game, and you are doing a lot in it with very little. It's all about the combinations of powers that you put at your disposal. There's a little card drafting at the beginning. Uh, if you want, if you choose to play that way anyway, you're going to be drafting characters and, well, items, dragons, all sorts of things. You will be playing those cards out and then managing resources. You know, this card gives me this combination, which I will spend to build this other thing, and then that one plus this one get me something. All you're trying to do is get the 10 victory points. A very manageable game. But those little combos, those little moments of decisions, what do I do with my limited amount of actions is very thinking, very tricky, and it, it it did impress me very much with that feeling of managing to do a lot with very little. That's, I think, why it's on the list for me. It is a... This, uh, this might make... If I did 20, I need that game that's going to suck in the Magic players. That's what I would have. Okay. I don't know. That's a weird category to have, but there's a lot of people who play Magic. Dominion would be my game for that, but this might work too. Yeah. It's so clean. It is very clean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so my uh, number four pick, Res Arcana. No, I know this game is clean, is that there's no expansion been made for it or announced for it, and I don't care. There's been an expansion announced. Oh, but I don't care. I'll I'll gladly get it. It feels full. It feels like there's an answer to everything in there. All right. I, I want that expansion. I talked about my gateway, the medium weight. I think you should have a heavyweight game in your collection. Now, this one was a hard call. The board game. (laughs) Knockout. Um, This was a hard call because there's so many. In fact, it's interesting how few of my top 10 or top 20 are in this list for me. Um, But I want one heavy Euro-style game that people would play that you could conceivably play, not having played games before, but also offers some pretty good strategic choices. Mm, What do you think it is? Caverna. Yeah, it's a good choice. I thought about it, but it's also a gazillion pieces. This one has a lot of pieces, but not as many as Caverna. And this one is Terraforming Mars. Hmm. Really like Terraforming Mars. Yes, again, this one also falls prey to there's, I think, six expansions for it. But again, you would not miss out on any of the other stuff with the base game. The base game has almost like this own extra set of cards that you could not use anyway. I just do anyway. Right. I've yet to see a game of this play the same. It is an engine building game. You have these cards, you build this cool thing that you can do, but the way the cards come up, it's different every time. Uh, this is certainly a game that has offered me, I think, of all the heavier Euro games, other than maybe Viticulture, which I considered yeah. for the same category. I really yeah, like yeah, Viticulture. Yeah. Um, but I picked Terraforming Mars because I think the space theme is pretty hot right now. People tend to, Mars is on people's brains. We're going to go there at some point. We were supposed to go there in 2009. I think next week is when they finally land, right? <laughs> he actually had me going. I was like, wait, what? I, not land, but I thought, is there a launch I missed? No, I don't know. Um, but I, I think the Mars thing, and this is also does the Mars thing in about as straightforward as the way you can. Right. It's not. This is not Mars goofy with Mars. doobly doobly gobble. Yeah, and it's not like, it's actually, it feels like serious 
Mars, right? I mean, that's kind of what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, mostly. There's a bit of alternate history-ish stuff, but it's mostly taking it seriously. You are terraforming Mars. Right. So that's my number four pick. All right. Cool. Number three. All right. My number three is my racing game placeholder, and it is Jamaica, as I thought. I thought Z would put it out on his list, but yeah. this is a game that uh, that's, that's has that racing. Uh, this is more choices now for people. Yeah, um, it has that racing thing. That's the the core mechanism. You're trying to race around the island of Jamaica in your pirate ship, and uh, you're trying to get there first uh, to have the best chance at winning. Uh, person who beats around gets gets to start counting their points with the number 15 and then it goes back how far back you are uh, if you are too far back you're actually going to start the game with negative uh, start the end points with negative points but getting there is is the cool thing you can you're, you're playing cards uh, and uh, the, the 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 look of this game is really what kind of brings it to the forefront here and that's what usually makes it pop uh, for people walking by as it's being played as yeah. well uh, but the gameplay is really fun you're choosing cards you get to do a morning and an evening action on your turn uh, and that's determined by uh, the dice that are rolled each turn you can you can attack other people which is probably where uh, one of the things that took it off your list is because it's a little bit more confrontational a little bit more in your face yeah. um, but it's really lighthearted in, in such a way ha, ha, ha. that it's you know it's that <laughs> so, yeah, give me a goofy go. piratey cartoony piratey uh, feel to it you know so, what I think it is actually I at like the end it. of the day I think Downforce, uh, no matter where you are on the scale of like core gamer to casual gamer, I, th I feel like it, the spread there is pleases more people than Jamaica. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure. I think Jamaica skews this way towards the casual gamers, and I think at some point it becomes like, come on, I don't want to roll dice against you and I literally steal all your victory points from your board because I rolled better on one die, which could happen. You know what I mean? Whereas... Downforce feels light. You can only steal it from one, from hole. one person. But like, if they have a bunch hole. of gold, those are points. Yeah, that could be like a bunch of points swing, right? Which will probably swing back. It's fine. But yes, um, I don't know. It just feels. Like I guess I'm a casual please, gamer. Then it might please more people. I really I enjoy this game, uh, Me too. and I, I would I would play this game hands down before a lot of other games. Uh, especially in a newer, uh, if there's somebody newer at the table. Yes. Um, so I really enjoy it. My number three. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. All right, my number three pig is my other cooperative game. What is it? Well, I mean, you're like leaning on uh, the horrified train these days, but I'm going to have to say you're going to go back with the classic pandemic. I didn't include. I didn't include. It is one of the pandemics, but it is not classic pandemic. I'm going pandemic Iberia. Iberia. Oh, good. My good news. Favorite. Unlike Sam's list. This one's easy to find. <laughs> nah. This one's it, cheap. You don't like this one? No, this is my favorite. Oh, it is your favorite? This is my favorite one, yeah. Uh, Pandemic Iberia. That's not Legacy. Sure, right, yeah. No, Good, and I, and I, I, would, I wouldn't put that on the list because it has a limited lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have just 10 games, soon you'll have just 9 games. <laughs> um, <laughs> you give someone 10 Legacy games, they're like, I'm out! I'm at zero! Sorry. I said 10 only, you're That's done. That's it, you're done. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the thing about this one is it feels... Like a period piece, and it is. It's set in that, you know, the different era, and it, uh, it's charming. There's a certain charm. I know the theme is about diseases and so forth, but it transports you to a different world. Yeah. The original pandemic, if you're American anyway, uh, well, I guess not. That's all over the place, but you start at the CDC. Mm -hmm. uh, it just feels less um, like this game is transporting me to another world. I think if you have just 10 games, that's a nice feeling to cultivate in your collection. Sure. And there's also a couple of sort of mini expansions right in the box that you can choose to play with or without. And that's all there is to it. So again, this felt a bit more complete nowadays. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's engaging, really like this. So, Pandemic Iberia, number three pick for me. Well done. Uh, Hi, my number three, my, first, my top three would be games that if I was giving someone gifts to put in your collection, I would probably give you these three games. To anybody? Almost, yeah, sure. Mm. I won't say to anybody because there's always there's people who don't like games and if, if you if you don't like these you don't that. like games. No, I disagree I'm, with those people that don't like games. Actually, I've definitely met a couple. Uh, what? Of people who don't like any games. 
by blood I may be related to some. I don't know if I don't think there's anybody alive who does not like any game ever. But if there's no way to prove my theory, so I'm pretty much safe. You know what I mean? There's a way to disprove it. You just got to find guess, one person. I guess it depends on how narrow. No, there's no way you cannot teach one person every game possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like games. You are gonna play <laughs> until we find one. I mean, one. like what games generate that feeling of of uh, yeah, like competing and and uh, you know boasting maybe a little bit and just like all the possible shades of gaming. Someone likes a game out there. Like, uh, everyone likes a game out there. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how narrow your your definition okay. of what a game is. But, sure. without getting into such nonsense, I feel like... You there mean are philosophical debates? Thank you. Go ahead. Nonsense. nonsense. <laughs> so, I feel like there's some... Anyway, it doesn't matter. This game, great it's game. Not a good Was on my list last time. Love it. Sheriff of Nottingham. Fantastic yeah, I game. And I, I, I don't think anybody since likes this. <laughs> No, this is, this is a negotiation game. This is that I, I struggled with. I want to put a social negotiation game on the list. Mm -hmm. I thought about Werewolf, but there's a lot of people who don't like Werewolf. Sure. Um, and there's some people who don't like Sheriff of Nottingham, too. I get that. But it's, I found more people like it than not because about Sheriff of Nottingham is you can lie to other people, and some people really like that. You can also straight up tell the truth all the time. So if you're like, I, I don't really want to lie, you could pull it off in this game. And then you could lie later on after telling her when you don't like lying. And really, really trick everybody. I love sure. this game. It's very successful uh, all the time when I've taught it. Um, it's a lot of fun. I will say that when this game came out, and up till June it was a Dice Tower Essential game, so there's you know that self-serving in there, but uh, it's been sold to come on, and so it's not a Dice Tower Essential game anymore. And I still put it on the list because I think it's that good of a game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you watch our live playthroughs, the Sheriff of Nottingham ones are some of the most fun to watch. I'm, I'm serious to think about bringing I'm, it out of mothballs for this upcoming 24-hour marathon because it's that funny. Cool. Number two. All right. My number two is the dexterity placeholder uh, for my list, and that is... Flick him up? No, he doesn't like that. Huh? A dexterity. Jenga. You don't like flick him up, I think. No, I don't. Well, I do, but it's not that. A dexterity sort of one. Physical not slapping pitch car, game. right? See, I didn't put pitch card because it's really expensive and I would have a hard time telling well, you I didn't put that. pitch card because it's sprawling and it's expensive. A small dexterity. This, this mini, mini, mini easily, pitch car you played easily, on the palm of your hand. This easily fits on, on any table. On any table. Yeah. Well, I mean, any regular sized table. Holy War. No, what's that game called? The uh, Holy War. No, what's that one we just got? <laughs> that one with the uh, catacombs. Flick of Faith. Flick of Faith. No, not that one. Holy War. Flick of Faith. Wow. Well, yeah, what is it, about. Sam? It's called Ice Cool. Oh, of course it is. It's called Ice Cool. Oh, you big dummy. I can't believe. <laughs> This is <laughs> oh, everyone here is saying in the comments. I could have just looked at the comments. Oh, no. Sorry. Of course it's that's cool. We're, we're sorry. People out there, you know, folks school. watching know like a lot of our they're, fans. They're saying a lot oh, with you, big picture. dummy. I'm sorry. That's really dark. I'm, I apologize for that. That one oh, was that's, taken that's in cool, the man. freezer. It's, it's in the ice. I get it. It's cool. It's, yeah, it's the, the door you closed that. So, Say the, it. The, so, the, so the light didn't come on. Yeah, that's that's what it is. But anyway, Ice School is a great little dexterity game where, where each player is going Going to be taking on either the role of high school penguins uh, that are trying to cut class, go get a snack, and get back to class before the uh, the uh, hall monitor. Uh, totally legit them. thing. Yeah, sure, of course. I mean, it's it's cute. Yeah, it's anthropomorphic penguins, so ah. it's totally legit. Um, but the cool thing about this is that you can get good at flicking those little penguins around and making them do what you need them to do need in certain situations. A but <laughs> a fish sandwich. You can also make these absolutely mm. off the wall random shots that nobody could have ever planned for in 
in any way. That's why it's a great family game because yes. the kid that doesn't have the, the best uh, motor skills yet can still pull out the win um, with those random shots. And that's why I like this game a lot, and I think it should be part of anybody's collection. That's my number two, Ice Cool. All right, my number two pig is a big game. There's a lot of it's very thinky. It is uh, still manages to be colorful, though, and uh, in my opinion, captivating. I know you don't like it very much, but Five Tribes is my number two pick. One that has stayed in the, in the general sort of, you know, awareness of games, which tapers off very quickly. I think this one still gets a decent amount of love. I'm just not good at it. I do like the game. It's a little slow I'm just not good at uh, also it. as in, you know, I could see part of it is a little you, you, there's a lot of possibilities for moves, so it could slow down everybody as everybody is thinking and processing what they want to do. But there's a little bit of bidding for place order at the beginning. That was one of the things that helped put it on the list because it feels like an extra interesting choice. Mm -hmm. That thing you are bidding with is victory points at the end of the game. So you pay a bunch, you're hurting yourself. You're cutting into your profits. And then the action on the board feels distinct from a lot of games out there. It has a Mancala-esque feeling to it. Grab all the things, drop them off one at a time. But you set the direction in which you're going. And if you want to turn, you can do so. It's not as straightforward as it's the main... A, it's not a circle. Right. It's not you the, can go in any... Yeah, you can you snake, want. you can double back from yeah. the Talio began. You cannot do that. And then each of the different sort of characters has interesting abilities tied to them. I always have a good time with this game. I've taught it a bunch. I've enjoyed uh, expansions for it. But really, I enjoyed the game plenty before they ever came out. He liked the game for it was cool. Um, no, the game like was that. always cool. <laughs> uh, but they did <laughs> add a lot to it. And that stuff works. But it really stands on its own very well. I think if you remove the expansions, you don't suddenly find yourself thinking, I'm missing something. Right. And some games, once you add an expansion, you have a hard time going back. So, yeah, I just really like it. It's an interesting game, engaging. Five tries. Number two pick. Cool. My number two, I think every collection should have a party game. Sure. Period. But not and this one. It's ridiculous. No, nah, it's, it's, it's really weird. We talk about this all the time. In board gaming circles, there's, for some, a lot of board gamers, there seems to be this disdain and against party games, and I, I'll never understand that. It's that like, is true, except for a couple of games that feel a little elitist. Sure, right. Like, it's, these games are like, okay. Yes. But usual party games, get out of here. With but at the end of the day, that's the kind of game it's easiest to get people to play. Sure. You know, anyway, so for me, it's the classic. It's the one that's made me laugh more than any other game. I'm out playing. <laughs> <laughs> See, it makes me laugh. Yep. Time's up. Time's up. That's and uh, you can play Time's Up title. I used to say Title Recall was way better than Time's Up. And I'm kind of swinging back on that a little. I still like the categories better because there's games and things like that. But the people one, I think, has made me laugh more, especially when the person has no idea who the person is. And they're just making stuff up. Or they try to make who something about their name. Be? Who would not know people? <laughs> uh, this is one that almost is guaranteed to be in our live marathon. Oh, that's this happening. <laughs> Time's up is coming, okay? That's There's actually happening. with Brothers Murph. <laughs> you're going to see, you're gonna see some Brothers games we played. Paul. <laughs> oh, On boy. the same team. This is happening. Yeah, yeah. I better... I better be wearing a diaper for that one. It's a That's going to be fun stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why would Stay, you need to wear a diaper? Come back for that. If you're watching this live now, you, you better make sure you come back for that. Watch Tom Vessel wear diapers. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just glossing right over that. Please let that go. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, a fantastic game. I think everybody should play it. It's just a fantastic game. Time's up. And finally, number one. Jerk. Well, you weren't going to do it. Oh, man. That ain't... I've, I've, that was filled with bits, Tom. And I now feel, they're all over. All right. I feel all right, scared. what are we doing here? Here we go. Are we ready? Watch out. Please don't do that near the computer. You're scaring me. The computer? What? That oh, was not what was happening. No. Yeah, let's show him what I meant. <laughs> yeah, here, right. turn the screen <laughs> towards us. <laughs> all right, high roll. If you get a natural 20... 
Highest? You get to do another top ten next week. What if you hit the ceiling? It's disqualified. Oh, closest. There's a camera up there. Closest without you going hit the over? camera, you're fired. All right, turn on that overhead camera. Let's no. <laughs> oh, it's not no. on? No. <laughs> okay. No. Why am I the adult today? What is going on? All right, here we go. Because you're no fun. 16 is pretty oh, good. I'm feeling good. Um, <laughs> so I rolled a 16, <laughs> but bumped his die to a 17. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate. Okay. What? Get out of here. A six. <laughs> the peasant of numbers. Okay. All right, Tom. So I guess you're first. I guess I broke the tie. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I broke the tie, but in your favor. Actually, we're going to do it normal. I know that I'm always against that, but I think... I'm going to try to guess everybody's, and so I have no idea what yours is. Sam's is not like one of his top games. <sighs> but What's there's the one category? game. You've been doing mechanism, so what do you got? Give us that. Well, this no, no, is, no. Uh, I'm going to. Okay, go ahead. You don't want to hear the mechanism? I mean, deduction, unless it is. Deduction slash party game. This is the game he puts on every single list ever. Oh, it's not. Yes. Well, is then, it a dice game? <laughs> no. Is, no? Is it called Bang the Card Game? No. Is it about Patriots or possibly Redcoats? No. Then that means it's about murder. Possibly. <laughs> and that's the one I bumped out for not being too pretty. Like, really? pretty enough. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Go I ahead. agree. I agree. It's an ugly game. It but is. But boy, is it fun. It is real good. It is very, very fun. It is an ugly game. And stop looking at me like that, Roy, because it is an ugly game. I'm... I'm Roy didn't do the that. art. Did you? I, no, but he gave me this look like, how could you say such a thing? Well, because it's true. Um, it's... You should probably tell him what it is. Deception, Murder, in Hong Kong. Oh! Dude. No, no. That's, I don't know. Now, the picture I think I have set with this is actually a picture that I pulled from one of our videos for the expansion uh, which is called Undercover Allies, yeah, but it basically still gives you the idea. But this actually looks a little bit better than the base game. Uh, generally speaking, it's it's just a great uh, a great game, and this is one of the games where the more the merrier, because you you the more people you have playing the game, the more uh, roles, different kinds of roles, especially with the expansion, uh, Undercover Allies, you can have you can have more roles with each person, and there's more. Um, specialization, I guess you could say, between each person at that point. Uh, with fewer number of players, you've just simply got, okay, you've got a murderer and you've got an accomplice, you've got a couple agents, and then you have the one dude. With like, I've played a 12 player game of this, and there was like uh, a an insider. The you played 12 um, players, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. That's probably a, a, my my most favorite game of this has been that full count of 12 players. That it was full really count. fun, really that's fun. Wow, one murderer, two accomplices, one peeping tom, <laughs> two victims. <laughs> There's no victim One in deception. One coroner. <laughs> no, I, I can't remember all of the different roles. And, Doing and coroners. Actions. All this is that. how I died. Nope, that guy's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> One of the coroners is actually working with the murderer. That's right, but traitor this is coroner. A, this is a team game <laughs> where you're trying to deduce who the murderer and the accomplice are. At the same time, there's one person who is the eyewitness who knows who the murderer and the accomplice are but don't know the exact things that were employed to carry out the homicide. Um, and so they're trying to stay as hidden as possible while trying to help the, the uh, agents as much as they can because if you do actually pick who the murder and accomplice is, they have the opportunity to then try to say, okay, I think this person is the eyewitness. And if they do that successfully... Eyewitness is what Zeke calls peeping Tom. Yes, there you go. Um, yes, and if they yeah. do that successfully, they've won even though they've been caught. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a great game and it uh, really fits well into that party social deduction atmosphere yes. game. This is the one that I was battling with Obscurio over. Um, well, I did that exact same fight in Obscurio 1. Yeah. So there you go. I so, guess we got both on the list. Yep, that's good. So my number one, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Cool. My number one pick. Huh. You said no more, no more cooperatives. It's not cooperative, no. Weird. And you did five tribes already. I did. The order mine of mine was not Is this a party game? It's not a party game. It's a card game. It plays... Quite, it, it, it's a large not be that stupid range. one player. Oh, 
Yeah, plus a large range of players. Six nymphed. No, it's not as light as that. A card game that plays a lot of players, but not light. Well, not as light as Six Nymphs, which is about float light. away light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it what's what? How new is it? Ten years old, I think. Like, oh. like seven years old, ten years old. <laughs> it's a slight difference there. Three years. I love how I used to do this, and you guys would get get angry at me for doing it. And we didn't get angry. It was it the, almost as it was the almost as a matter. No, of this is the number now. one. I'm trying to guess is number one. Give me a clue. Card drafting game. It's a board game. Sushi, go. No, it's not that light. <gasps> I have no idea. Seven Wonders. Oh, good pick. <laughs> Wonders, that is a man. good pick. I don't. It's a classic. Hercules, Hercules. Seven he's Wonders is um. He's not in there. He yet. should be. Um, Seven Wonders <laughs> just feels like a classic. Yay! What? We hit two thousand viewers. Nice, fantastic. Thank you. And it was all thanks to Seven Wonders. No. Is that not it. Sushi Go. <laughs> <laughs> We're decked out in nineteen ninety. Oh, I made bad <laughs> jokes. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Seven Wonders is a card drafting game. You're building your little civilization. You are competing with the two neighbors to your side, drafting cards. Uh, it's quick. It's a very quick game. It's about 30, 40 minutes, no matter how many people are playing. So that's very nice. You can play up to seven in about the same time frame. The game uh, feels like it ramps up extremely quickly. I like that. You're playing three epochs, three whole stages, but each one... Is so fast and yet feels distinct, and things build upon one another. Mm -hmm. This is one of those games that I think goes over well with just about anybody, because people will find because there's enough in it that people will find something in it they like, and nothing in it feels so offensive that it pushes people out. I'm not. I'm you know not what I mean? Like some people love drafting, mm -hmm. but they don't like <clears throat> conflict. There's conflict in this, but it's barely there. Yeah, yeah. And yet some people like conflict. And they'll find it. They'll look over here and look over here and be like, I'm going to crush your armies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you can draw out from the design the thing you like and focus on that. And that's, it manages to touch on everything without making anything off putting. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I feel about it. So, seven I like, wonders. I like things that are made of pudding. Mm. I haven't had pudding in a while. Now I'm thinking what about it. What is going on? <laughs> All right. I refer back to my previous statement. I don't Nerd. think you guys will guess mine either. So I picked um, an all-around game that I think is great for new people, is it, that, I great, that I think is great for gamers. It is one of my most played games in the last five years. Is it based on Bob Ross? A couple years. Um, no. Wait, it's your most played game over the last five years, but it's I only said, been out for two? That's, that's, how much I, that's how much I played it in the last two years. How I much think. did you oh. play it in the previous three years before it came out? <laughs> that's what I was just thinking. I was like, not a lot, right? That doesn't make sense. I'm saying in the last five years, this is the. I get it. Okay. Whatever. I don't think I should have to explain. You played, played it a lot. Got it. <laughs> is it nerdy? Ish. Nerdy ish. Is it space about space base vegetables? That's correct. Space base. Oh. Okay, okay. Space base, Vegetables. man. I don't know what it is about this game. It just, it does well. I think I put this on the, on the uh, gateway gamer list. But it, I also, you this, love this game. I really well, do. Nerves, but it's not really just that. I, I think it goes over well. This is one of those games. There's a lot of games that I love, but I don't often feel like teaching them to people. Sure. Um, this one, I'll gladly. I'm like, oh, let's play space base. Go on, you want to play space base? I'll play space base. Oh, you're, you you want to learn space base? I'll come over and teach it to you. I won't even play. I'm just happy that someone's playing it. Hmm. I, this game just is extremely fun for me. Mm. Um, all right. I think that it will be fairly high in my top games of all time. I don't know where yet because I haven't made the list yet. Top ten. Is, would you say I don't know. Is, I don't know. Would but you say this is the best game of all time? No. So not number one. Would you say it's uh, <laughs> say like oh there's so many great games you know but there's one other game that you might like more than this one. <laughs> so. Space Base, a fantastic not game. <laughs> not. All right, so what are games that you think we should have mentioned but we didn't? There we go. Why didn't Sam mention Memoir 44, you might wonder? I Be thought you would for sure. Because it is, again, it has that, it focuses on conflict. 
And is that esoteric a little bit, maybe? Not really. World War II themes. I mean, it, really. no, it focuses on conflict, and some people just... I mean, it's almost... Uh, I don't know. It's, but I, I would say it's almost pretty close to being straight down the middle, people who like and don't like conflict. Sure, right. And you're, it's hit or miss. So that's the only reason I didn't put it on my list. Yeah. Well, someone here just said they have 20 out of 29 games. That's pretty good. That's good. You're doing fine. Uh, beyond Boulder Dash, I didn't, or Boulder Dash, I didn't put on the list because I just put one party game and I put times up. Hmm. You can also technically play the dictionary game for free if you want. Well, that's also, you could do that with times up if you want to. Yeah, which is why it's not on my list. Surprise, <laughs> no Cosmic Encounter or Blood Range. Cosmic Encounter, I love it, but it is definitely not a game I would recommend to everyone. There's a lot of people I'd be like, yeah, you're not going to like Cosmic Encounter. Mm-hmm. I mean, not all, there's very few games most that I would say for everyone, but they have a wider range than Cosmic, as much right. as I love it. Right. What about Blood Rage? Same thing? Again, yeah, it's, it's a little bit too, I wouldn't say advanced, but it's a little bit on the heavier side than what I wanted to do on this, on this list. What about San Juan? San Juan is great. Um, I think Res Arcana kind of feels like the combo-driven nature of it. And uh, at the end of the day, San Juan's a little more dry. Mm. It's a very specific theme, but kind of a dry one. Building buildings in Puerto Rico uh, in that uh, time period, I don't think is near is as uh, picturesque, let's call it, as Res Arcana. And someone mentioned King of Tokyo. That was like sitting on my list, floating around the whole time. I was like, King of Tokyo, ah, I couldn't fit it on the list. Yeah. I really like. I think it was on my list last time. Yeah. Definitely one I really thought about, though, yep. for sure. I got to almost finishing the list and realized, you know, there's not a lot of dice rolling on here, because um, I had already put Downforce on it, so it's a racing game. I didn't have dice, so I almost put King of Tokyo on there. But I know a lot of people that don't like it. I don't know. People feel it. It it's too close to Yahtzee maybe it's like Yahtzee with some you know a little bit of window dressing yeah. which I don't agree with personally but I get it so I went with uh, Atlantis Rising 2nd edition wow, you're there's rolling to push your luck and stuff a ton of games that people are saying I mean that <laughs> Dinosaur Island Evolution Patchwork Camel Up I consider Camel majority to put a race game, game. Yeah. and I just I didn't have room to put a race again this is almost like a 20 game list for me because I want to put a racing game on it I want to put a Social deduction game on it. I, right. You know, there's so yeah. many different categories. Um, all righty, well, we're going to get going here. We're going to be back tomorrow morning. We are playing um, Hour of Need, so we'll see you then. And then Sweet. next, well, week from Monday, not Monday, but a week after Monday, our live 24-hour marathon. It's on. If you watch it live over that probably 30 hours at least of marathon what we have scheduled um if you watch it live you have a chance to win one of many games including like a full blinged out nemesis which showed up in a popular cartoon just recently nice so, and yes we know about that we okay anyway nice. thanks so much for watching uh if you're watching this later on put your top 10 in the comments let other people know what you think would be 10 essential games yeah until then i'm tom vassal i am z garcia thank you sam healy see you on the flip side folks and take care Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.